All right. Okay. Let's start. Fine. All right. So I would like to invite uh, on the dais uh, Mr. Burgess Cooper. He is partner uh, <coughs> cyber security at ENY and X CISO. A big round of applause for Mr. Burgess. And uh, we have panelist uh, Mr. Thomas Langford uh, from Resource UK. And we have another panelist, uh, Mr. Durga Dube, CISO Reliance. I welcome everyone. Thanks. We got two empty chairs. Any volunteers? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Shangran had a joke, and he was telling me the safest place to be is in the panel because I ask Do more questions to the audience. Manish, you want to be on the panel? Come on, it's a CISO panel. Come, come. No, we'll never get a word in edgeways if he comes in. One more. He'll do all the talking again. Yeah, I don't worry. I'll moderate that. He's an old friend. Right, I'm going to take you away much. your microphone. So why are we here today? What's the discussion? Do we know? Or is this, by the way, room is khali here? Okay. Who said that? I, I would like to invite Mr. Harish Pillay uh, for, to join this uh, panel. I'm sorry. Thanks. So now we have a full house, right? We can get the whole, the seats are quite empty. All right, so as, as you said rightly, uh, should CISOs promote, uh, I see more guys coming in, researchers. The CISOs are ready for battle. So should CISOs promote more bug bounties, hall of fame? Uh, before I start, how many from the audience are actually has ever done a CTF, has a bug bounty the name or a hall of fame? One, two, three, four, that's it, five, six, seven, seven. seven. you can be out here, okay, and you can get more. So, and I'm not going to ask the audience a question, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask the audience a question first. From you guys, what do you think is more important than and why? Is a Hall of Fame more important to you guys as researchers, and the CISOs will have the backtrack to that. Is a bug bounty program more important? What is your sense? What is your ask of the CISOs out here? If you had to say to the esteemed panel, guys, go back home and put a program for bug bounties and Hall of Fame. From the seven people who raised their hand, what would be your ask? What is more important to you? Is, is Hall of Fame more important? So who's got the Hall of Fame right now? Someone raise a hand. OK. So what's so important to you? What's your ask for the CISO? Put a mic, please. Can you get mics around, please? Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Peter. I'm from Adobe, and we do have a Hall of Fame program. We do also have a private bug bounty program. Uh, so I feel like um, you know, at Adobe, we have a, a good balance currently between incentivizing participation among security research to report bugs to us. Um, so, uh, so I guess what was what, what the question that you have? The question is, what do the researchers like more? You know, if, if they are to ask the CISOs, should the CISOs go back and start a Hall of Fame program? Should they start a bug bounty program? What should be more? What should be less? Uh, what, is, what, what do you hear the researchers asking you when you run both programs? How have you achieved the strike balance? Well, yeah, I guess, it, so from a vendor perspective, um, I think it's important to have a program uh, that, that is driven largely by the maturity of your security program that you already have in place. So I think if you are a relatively uh, young firm and you haven't necessarily had the security uh, investments yet in place, a bug bounty program probably isn't the, the smart move immediately, uh, starting with a Hall of Fame program and then eventually evolving. Does into one precede the other? So you're saying if you're a, I'm just repeating for everyone's, if you are a young firm, you don't have the money as yet, you start with a bug bounty program, and then some point you you move to a Hall of Fame. I I would actually go with the opposite. I would say okay. start with a, well a hall, hall of Fame program, and then evolve into a bug bounty program where you're actually you feel confident in your environment, and you're willing to challenge the researchers in exchange for some kind of remuneration. That's the that from my perspective, that's the way to go. Okay. Anybody else who's got a Hall of Fame? Come on. Before I come to the CISO group. Guys, don't be shy. This is a two-way interaction. Otherwise, only we will speak. Right, Manish? There's probably a good right. reason why there's not many Hall of Fames out there. Okay, Durgachi, your views. What do you think is more accepted in the industry? What are you hearing more of? 
Hey, Hall of Fame is uh, something very generic. Like if you if you are now on following the real Hall of Fame, it means that respect the past and uh, protect the future. All of us, all of us do that, including security guys, including the HR guys, including in all business guys. So Hall of Fame is pretty much generic. So in Alcon, the Hall of Fame means probably something very much related to the bug bounty. Hall of Fame is okay, patting on the back. All of us do day in and day out. But bug bounty is a, something which you should do in the corporate or not. My opinion at this point in time is, of course we do that, but I agree with the, that, that gentleman that it all depends on the maturity of the organizations. If the organization is pretty much matured, the security organization is matured, it makes sense and makes real sense to publicly do a bug bounty, which we do. We as a company, we have done a bug bounty scheme. We have officially announced a bug bounty scheme. So at this point, I think my, my point is bug bounty is required for an organization which is matured. And Hall of Fame is a very initial stage. It should be done by everybody, including every, every functionary should do Hall of Fame. Do you think you're the only unique form in India to have done a bug bounty? I don't know. We are unique in many senses. Uh, but uh, for sure, uh, would have done in bug bounties. <laughs> Manish, your views? Both models have their place. I think the gentleman in the back really uh, sort of uh, summed it up pretty well. Uh, recognition is extremely important. Uh, it depends upon which stage of life where an individual is. Uh, but speaking from an organizational perspective, uh, if an organization has neither of the two, I think to start with, it, it makes a lot of sense to start with the Hall of Fame and quickly progress, uh, particularly if it's a large organization and uh, have the uh, wherewithals and the resources to quickly scale it up uh, to have a bug bounty as well. But start with the Hall of Fame. You think start with the Hall of Fame? Start with the Hall of Fame. Well, they were saying start with the other way around, you know, no, for a mature... Uh, no, he told okay, the okay, fine. That, he, start, he said that. Uh, there's also a perception that sometimes Hall of Fames have done more for looking good than just actually doing good work. Do you find that in the researcher community? There's an accusation or there's a, there's a thing from the industry that sometimes Hall of Fame is just done so that I can see my photo on Google, Facebook, is that the perception in the industry or is it, come on, any responses? Yeah, go ahead, get the mic and speak please. Why is the industry guy so, so quiet? Hello. Uh, what I think, Berg, is, is that before taking it to the Hall of Fame, the more important issues for the CISO, CISO is to take the things to the management committee to make cybersecurity a board meeting issue. That is more important than, than come into a Hall of Fame. First, you take it to the management committee, then you make a Hall of Fame program. Well, let's assume we've done that. I'm, I'm sure they would have, but Rugaji, you want to respond to that? I, I, think, I think I didn't understand the context. That is pretty much there. The, 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 uh, the deliberation is on whether we should invite Hall of Fame to the outside people. Inside Hall of Fame is okay to invite uh, hall of fame to the outside people Unless i would just you are saying get the hall of fame guys to the board are you saying that no. I, I i would just like to flag something so that i will probably get a lot of interaction from you guys this is one something which we we have failed for the last two years we've started bug bounty scheme no offense to anybody sometimes of course very rarely people use this bug bounty program for pitching certain solutions to the industry so they use bug bounty and they tell us that there is some bug, which is actually not a bug. And they just want to open the door and come and start discussion and finally pitch for certain solutions. It is okay, but don't use bug bounty. Bug bounty is very, 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 very pious thing. And, and we respect bug bounty. And we want young people like you so to actually earn a very good life using uh, in bug bounty. We should respect bug bounty. But using bug bounty I mean, so loosely makes me feel that there need to be a regulator for bug bounty. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts, audience? It's a very good point. Do you think sometimes people misuse that? Can you share me an example? A mic here, please. Thank you. You're going to be moving up and down here. Yeah? A colleague has told that, especially they try to. Um, Cross the CISO and go to the CEO level and try to show that when these are the vulnerabilities your organization has, and your CISO is not useful. And uh, this not is useful. What, 
Yes. CISO yes. is not useful, okay? I'm and uh, they try to pitch uh, in such a way that uh, it is a crisis. Okay, that's where the real thing comes into picture, where are, are we giving a right picture? It may be true, but it is, does it making the business sense and not from the external sense we may not be knowing. The person who is trying to be a bug bounty might be knowing only that particular vulnerability, but he may not be knowing the complete business sense of that particular organization. So they may, I, like we have accepted that particular risk, but Tom? they will not be knowing that. Yeah, I think a bug- But it still remains a vulnerability is what you're saying. Okay, I think a, a, the wink of an eye. a bug bounty is a, is a two-edged sword or a bug bounty program. If it's, if it's badly set up or badly managed, it can do a lot of reputational damage. I mean, by its very nature, it's external, uh, it's in the public eye, etc. So, um, you know, setting up a bug bounty is not simply firing up a spreadsheet and sticking it on a SharePoint somewhere and, you know, and giving people your phone number. I mean, it's it's quite a complex activity. You know, Microsoft hadn't had one set up until you know about what eight years ago. Could you give us an ago? example of a what's a structured bug bounty program and you could chip in because you have one running, and what's an example of a bad bug bounty program? Let's start with the latter one. Well, let's look at Uber. Yeah, they had a bad bug bounty program. They paid a hundred grand, didn't they? And it was a bug bounty, apparently. Okay, so that's one example, and I, uh, that's fine. Any other example from a structure perspective, without naming company? What's a bad bound, a bug bounty structure? Is it, are they not ethical disclosures or they don't have it? Uh, is it just quiet? Well, I think not having the framework so that, you know, re researchers who are submitting, you know, bugs and then potentially not giving the company enough time to respond. Uh, companies not responding. So actually having a bug bounty and then being sent, you know, vulnerabilities and not doing anything about it. Uh, and a security researcher is, you know, it's, it's, it's their salary, it's, it's what they get paid to do. They get frustrated, of course, they're gonna go public with it uh, if six months later there's, there's no communication at all. So it's a very, very active process. Uh, it's not something you just set up and forget. You have to you constantly engage with the researchers. The types of vulnerabilities might mean certain types of research, i.e. You know, cracking and hacking into your systems being done, which you need to be aware about. So, you know, you could see things as an attack when actually it's, it's done in the name of research. So, uh, you know, the, the, the whole bug bounty program is, is a complex environment that needs to be set up properly and managed properly. So you've been silent, your views. Yeah, I am actually sitting, sitting here and a Deep kind thought, of... I'm wondering what's gonna come from your end. No. Uh, get everybody <laughs> Well, I, okay, my, I, I'm going to speak from a head perspective and we are open source company. So, so, so the program few program things that we don't do and have not done so far, is bug bounties. There's no, no value in it. There oh, is no, no value. One. So you're saying in front of a whole Nalcon group, there's no value in it? There's no value in Guys, the Guys, you agree? All right. No, there's okay. no value for them. Th there is no value. Yeah. Let, let me try to finish. Thank you very much for adding to it. There's no value in and of itself that, oh, there is a bug bounty. Uh, is it what the business that we are in is and, and selling open source technology to companies. Uh, what we build is everything is open there. So there's no real, uh, you know, hidden stuff that you're going to try and discover. And once something has been found, a vulnerability has been found, you know, we get notified, our security teams are on it, and we are not the only ones trying to work on it. There's a lot of other people working on it together. So that's a very important aspect from our perspective. So when I hear all the, you know, issues of bug bounties and so on, they almost always come from closed Environments. That's the incentive for that. And I, I, I'll, I'll cite an example from, from uh, where I am uh, coming from. Uh, in, in Singapore, we had the Ministry of Defense uh, initiate a bug bounty, as it turned out, uh, to break into the defense network within Singapore. And I think they, they, somebody actually won $10,000 or $20,000, which was great. But their environment is a very specific type of environment where there's a lot less transparency into what goes on. So you are essentially looking at a black box and trying to break in. What we do from a Hat point of view, on the other hand, is not the same. The technology we provide our customers is not something that is hidden in that sense. It is, you know, it's open entirely. And so we have a means to go and fix it together with customers and together with everybody else. So having a specific back bounty 
makes really no sense. What about a hall of fame? Is the equivalent a, for open source? Yeah. I have a question, follow up question on this. So, do you want to uh, set up a bug bounty for the software that you're using or the environment you're using all your software in, right? Is it, is, is uh, the, the, what you were trying to say where bug bounty doesn't make sense to you? Uh, are you limiting that to the software uh, portion of it only, or are you looking at the entire environment that the uh, that the uh, your infrastructure is you know sort of spanning out in? Okay, I guess you are talking about our infrastructure that we run. Okay. Now that's a separate issue from the technology that we provide our customers, right? So what we provide to our customers is a different story. Now what we run, the same thing applies in that sense. Right? What we use is we do have proprietary software we have to run. So in that kind of a scenario, that makes sense. But the technology is not built by us. It may be built from by somebody else that we are now using for the purposes of what it's designed for. So if there's going to be a bug bounty for that piece of technology that we are running, because we have to run it for whatever you know, reasons that may be, now that's a different issue. Uh, I don't think we're going to necessarily have a bug bounty for those kinds of stuff, the stuff that we are running. But if there was going to be a bug bounty per se, I need to understand and, and be convinced that it makes sense to do so. Especially, it, it is on a scenario-by-scenario scenario basis. It cannot be a general purpose thing. It has to be a scenario-by-scenario scenario basis. So if my customer happens to be, in this in the example I gave earlier, the defense ministry, by definition, they are you know, extra cautious on everything. Everything, as far as they're concerned, is closed. Now, although we may be run, they may be running our technology in-house, but from the external perspective, nobody knows what it is. So you're trying to break in to see what it is. So there, in that scenario, that makes sense. But as a whole, no. Yeah, but uh, the software that you build that the defense takes over, why does, not, why does it not make sense to have bug bounty program on the software that you build itself? So are we saying generalized? What you're saying is for open environments, open source, you don't need bug bounty program? Is that what is a, it, what it, do you guys feel? No? Can you speak up? No, so he's saying they do as a company, they, they don't feel value. And I'm just saying, is it as open source? Do you, uh, it may not be seen value for, what's your views? Uh, depends on uh, what the software is being used for. Uh, it may be open source, but companies might be using for some purposes which are critical. Consider, uh, consider say uh, Apache Access 2, right? It's an open source product. So Apache can say, the Apache organization can say, I don't require any security uh, bug bounties or any other vulnerabilities to be disclosed in that product. But in some company X, it might be used as a critical software to host all the services. Right, so, so does that make I, I open? Think, yeah, I think what you're saying is, is exactly the kind of thing I was mentioning here. There are organizations that can provide bug bounties, for example, right? And there are organizations that doesn't make sense to them. So Apache, for that matter, does not make sense that they provide a bug bounty for the products that comes out of the Apache Foundation. If that same product is run in a company, now it's just the same thing as I mentioned earlier. So we do, within Red Hat, use third-party products which are not open source products. They are proprietary products. We do have them. Now, are we going to run a bug bounty for that? Probably not. We would maybe, in that case, make sense that the vendor whom we acquired the technology that we are going to use in-house, just in your example, the company that uses Apache products in the organization may then want to look to the provider of that to see whether there's something that makes sense. Asim, your views? Sorry, got you by Do you think? Just an example here. I think Google runs... Uh, uh, kind of an incentive program if you uh, find a vulnerability and you patch it in an open source software. So I think uh, from that perspective, I think if Red Hat looks at uh, the open source that it uses as uh, a service or a product to third party to at least contribute to uh, people who are reporting and help in fixing uh, the bugs as well. So what I hear from everyone is probably they're saying that you may want to have some recognition for people who actually the, the thing about the way we do recognition, we do recognize a lot of people. So we do mention a lot of people who fix issues. It's not so much per se as giving you a dollar bill. But you want to pay them for it? No, it's not that. No, it's not that. We do hire them as well. 
So it's a different kind of payment we give them as well. He's got his eyes open. Come on. See. No, I think I think Go I ahead. think I have a view. Like uh, what he's telling has certain value. Like uh, proper open source system, formally announcing a bug bounty doesn't really make sense. If you have an open source system, you have used a couple of open source system and made a solution out of it, then it makes sense to really do a block bounty to find out whether you have an integration problem, whether you have an API integration problem or a microservices problem, all sort of things. And block bounty in general is really helpful. It is actually a crowdsourcing. It's, it's a kind of a crowdsourcing. You will get value out of it. Every time you get a value out of it, if it is managed, managed very well. I will just give you another thought which we are doing. We are trying to do bug bounty. We started doing bug bounty to the outsider for the last two years. Now we are thinking of doing the same bug bounty inside. We are actually inviting our own people to hack our own systems and give them the incentive. That's why we did. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike here, please, gentlemen. You opening the book? You're scaring us. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the panel discussion is. Uh, should all CISOs promote Hall of Fame within their organization? So within the organization. No, so it's within outside both. The whole idea is okay. It was mentioned there. And unless you have a different point of view, but you want to say something? So I want to know like how you can do within your organization and uh, what you can do. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that. You are uh, right, you are right. Uh, I, I, but you should have known Burgess earlier. Burgess <laughs> takes it in a different way always. So <laughs> it, it all depends on the Burgess mood. So he has <laughs> You know when Otherwise you've been Burgess. So uh, you are right, you are right, you are very meticulous. And you, that was the topic. You are hired. Yeah. <laughs> you are hired, Reliance is there. So, so I'll tell you what, what happens. And you are uh, giving a tablet for anyone who hires? Right? Yeah, that my HR heads and HR people are sitting over there. They Lisa, you got one hired out here. So I will tell you certain things. All of you know that the color of uh, the defender is blue. All of you know that. And all of you know that the color of the attacker is red. So traditionally, we all are called defender and you are all called attacker. I don't like that of light. Because there is a need to mix both the color and what comes out from the mix of blue and red is purple. So today, in my department, the cyber security department, what we call information risk management department, our color will be purple color. Because everybody there will have a red team capability and also will have a blue team capability. And the red team, red teamer, the red teamer inside the organizations will have initially will have the real incentive of as normally a person gets by doing a bug bounty scheme, successfully bug bounty scheme. We are yet to formalize that, but we have started doing it. We have started doing it started somebody who finds some problem in our public facing things. I don't want to name the public facing things, but I'm very, very scared of that. <laughs> so some of the public facing things I have, we have told our own people to find out the box and we reward them. Why only in, why public facing? Why not internal? No, we started, that's what I'm telling. We started with public facing thing. We may come to the internal thing. The things which are used by our consumer, Ashim, things ahead. used by our customers. We started doing that. Ma'am, I see both of you. A good point. Give us some input so that they can implement it. So, Ashim, before you say, uh, Manish, one question on the same part. How do you distinguish between a bug bounty attack and a real attack? From your, when you defend a big company as a CISO, how do you help people dif to differentiate? Then, Ashim's question. Frankly speaking, I wouldn't, if it's coming from outside, you wouldn't, you wouldn't I don't make uh, any difference. Uh, you, uh, you know, if you're talking about the. Uh, but is there a problem? Because you really have guys who are trying to break you for a reason so and for a season. It doesn't make a difference. If somebody is trying to break from outside, you got to treat everybody equally. Your job is to protect. Their job is to get through for whatever, the right or the wrong reason. For money uh, or for fame. Whatever it is. But the person is trying to attack from outside. I don't think you can get into a differentiation mode. You are there to protect your organization. You don't differentiate. If somebody is successful, if he happens to be a bug bounty kind of a guy, all great. If otherwise, then you have slightly uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If if if, uh, if if it's the other case, well, then, then I'll just give you one uh, example. Before, sorry, just taking. See, I just got a mail two months before. Uh, I will not uh, tell you the tenor of the mail. The, the mail was written like this: there is some bug in some of our system. I was given twelve hours time to contact that person, and it was very strictly written: Durga, this mail is specifically to you. This is not exclusively between you and me, there is a serious bog in your system, please take care and contact me within 12 hours. He was not knowing 
driving this issue, I would have access to my systems and I would find that how many such kind of mails he has written to the people. I found he has written 24 mails. Everywhere the tenor is same that it is exclusively to you. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, would, I waited for 12 years, 12 months, uh, 12, 12 hours. Then I called that person and I ultimately turned out to be a person whom I was knowing for a long time. And he was writing a mail in a different name. So interesting 12 hour story. Yeah. Asim, go ahead. Yeah. So coming back to the internal bug bounty program, I really don't see a point here. I mean, you hire a person, yeah. you, you give them a month, monthly the salary, their job is to do security assessment, and then you incentivize them because they found a bug. No, yeah. he's saying not security guys. Every a CRM user, a backend user, a teller, when they start doing an internal bug bounty program, when they who use the systems can tell you the faults far better than a pen tester, that's an internal bug bounty. That's what he's saying. Not the security. The business user team starts telling you business flaws through system can be hacked. It makes that's no difference. Uh, it, you should, you're under a, a moral obligation to report any kind of bugs that you find. Moral obligation not, and incentive. You know, why should I bother? It's not my problem. It's, it's Durga's problem. Well, then, then, then why are you working there? What, what is the purpose of you working there? Yes, go. You may be surprised, he may know business law more than all you guys would know. And I've seen that happen as an XC source. Well, certainly around process. Yeah, process okay. flaws. Exactly. could be broke to use frauds or something else. Yeah. And I they agree. will know more than the security. I agree. And I've seen that happen. Well, that's good. But Asip, just to answer your question, you have a point. But what happens is you know the security market very well. We don't get people. We don't get the right people, and very difficult to retain them. So there are there are we should different really find out different ways of incentivizing them. Yeah. One of the thing is creating competition among them. So who can really find for sit beyond office hours, work like you, your people, and find out this uh, box in the systems and incentivize them. Is it not a good thing to retain? What do you, you think is a good thing? I mean, as long as it's part of your as long as it's part of your uh, official duty. Uh, as an employee, I don't think you should be incentivized with anything. Well, there's, let me just comment on this. Yes, ma'am. I think she wants to. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, we all know that um, at least 15 to 20 percent of attacks come from insider threat. So, uh, when you allow every single person, every single employee in your organization to have a uh, to uh, yeah, allow can. penetration into your applications, don't you think that you are <laughs> giving them free access to yeah. you're right. You're right. You're right. How would do that? I'm telling you. You have a very right questions. Uh, when you when you start the big bounty program for inside, we actually tell one application only. We tell this application is open for big bounty. That's that's it. That's it. <laughs> anything other than that, everyone starts that bounty. anything other than that, you are losing your job. No, I, but, I just, uh, if let's say that, <laughs> yeah. yes, go ahead. there's actually a famous Dilbert cartoon where they introduce an internal hall, hall of fame and, or, and bug bounty. And one of the engineers punches the air and says, yes, I'm going to code myself a brand new SUV this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead. Okay, one, um, it's a real scenario. There were no incident raised from the employees for security prospect. Yeah, so, uh, see, so, uh, I announced a raise incident, find a security incident and raise it. So nobody did for Hall of Fame. But when they said it would be incentivized, when you do that, uh, it flooded. Right? So, so the first answer, answer is question. Hall of Fame doesn't work much because pat on back, every corner HR does every time, whatever you do. So, yeah. so, so, the so the second, Hall of Fame does not no, work for back. me, from my Cash side. works. Cash works. Uh, that, that has been proven, right? The what about stick? So that's a bounty then. Yeah, bounty, that monetary money. But I, th but I think my, you know, my role as a leader or whatever is not to stir up competition amongst my team. You know, that's not in my role description. My role description is to get the very best out of my team so that they are doing the best coding, the best, uh, the, the, the best testing, the best analysis, whatever. I think the more we create competition amongst our own internal people, we're going to be sowing more dissent amongst the, you know, 80% of those people. So you who, think should not be done? I don't believe it should be done in turn. Wow. So, we have two guys on the panel with different views. 
okay yeah. so it depends yeah, upon the organization good, good to have that yeah it's good to have a you do organization culture again are we talking about the it security or are we talking about information security if it is it security bug bounty CISO talks everybody maybe may not understand in the organization are 90%, you sure they understand 90 percent of the people may not understand except the it people or Today's the security time people everyone's tech savvy only the tech savvy Can guys one millennials again so again the millennials probably are more tech savvy than most of, of us again that depends upon what industry you are in if you are, go and ask a teller to do a bug bounty he may not understand just imagine He'll play ask tech them, tell them what is the innovation if they try to do it and 90 percent of these times they'll tell try to tell weakness in the process try to improve the process and that's where you'll find out the weakness in your organizations okay one more question very different how many guys on sock here sock at the service and you one chamiran two four hands can a bug bounty program also be utilized to improve your sock effectiveness any views go ahead wow for all four hands this is not a marketing stream but you can have your say yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, incentivizing uh, improvement plans across the board, right? I mean, uh, so utilizing a bug bounty program, Hall of Fame, to actually have it. Absolutely. But that Hall of Fame has got to be really large in this way. <laughs> it can't be the top 100 then. Agree? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ultimately, the, the, that, is, that, is, that is what, uh, why we are doing the bug bounty program. See, uh, so my one heart. is application improvement, but one is shock effectiveness also. Yeah, so I told, I told initially that purple team concept, so we do it uh, perpetually, like every time we do that, somebody will uh, test our applications and while testing the applications, uh, the definitely the SOC guys should get some kind of an alert. If they don't give an alert, get an alert, then we come and tell them that you have not got an alert, maybe something has to be done in the SOC. So overall, application security is done, SOC also is taken care of, so many things. Hall of Shame for the sock. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. You're from Netmatic. Yeah, so I think the You're not doing on the SOC team. You're trying to see effectiveness of the SOC program. Yeah, there cannot be any bug bounty without, this is my hypothesis, you can tell that if it is wrong. There cannot be any bug bounty without examining the efficiency of the SOC. Have to you have to have the efficiency of the SOC. Two more hands here, gentlemen. Three more hands. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, what I think is, uh, in terms of SOC and CSERT kind of activities, uh, bug bounty can really help in, uh, you know, developing more CTI more targeted threat intelligence especially because what uh, i have seen in the past that uh, there are partial disclosures coming out of uh, bug bounties for example there is a complicated vulnerability so you're saying bug bounty can be utilized to improve cti yes 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 so How? I mean, yeah so th there are activists so basically uh, i come from uh, agrochemical kind of uh, field and uh, uh, i look into cyber and cyber crime kind of uh, stuff over there so what we have seen is there are partial disclosures coming on our systems now what what does a partial disclosure mean is like if, if there is a complicated vulnerability or set of vulnerabilities only one vul vulnerability get disclosed uh, by a bug bounty guy and uh, he he pretends to be a white hack hacker he comes out with a vulnerability, takes an incentive. However, he has one more vulnerability in his pocket, which he can use against the organization later. So give one, take one later. Yes. And the later one is more incentivized because, you know, he can actually hack into the systems, take out the PII or whatever. He, he can actually best make a, use of that vulnerability. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, I mean, when we relate it to the SOC and CSERT and CTI kind of activities, it gives us a very nice tip and any tip, any small tip in CTI field is a big tip if used properly. So I think bug bounties can be helpful over there. But again, a counter question to my uh, dear uh, CISO panel that, you know, how, how do we Name, name, the, name the CISO you want to ask. <laughs> 
Come on. <laughs> Anyone, especially Manish, sir, because. Manish, uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, you just woke me up here. So, go ahead. <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> I heard he you. hasn't asked us yet. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay, What's the question is around uh, the cloud uh, stuff that Microsoft yeah. was, uh, I mean, it has. So, so, for example, if there is a partial is disclosure. A cloud, no, no, just to clarify, I, I've just finished three months in my yeah. role as global CISO yes. for Airtel. I was CSA India for Microsoft before this. So, yes. sure, sir. Sir, go ahead. Yeah. You can still ask. So you can still ask. Okay. The, uh, thanks for that. The question is, uh, I mean, in a huge cloud infrastructure such as Azure or yeah. similar AWS, or let's yeah. not name yeah. the company, mm -hmm. but if there is a partial uh, disclosure of a vulnerability, mm -hmm. and you know there is a possibility of that vulnerability, uh, you know, convoluting into a bigger one, and similar case that I just uh, mentioned about that, you know, there is a one more vulnerability in the pocket of a hacker, which can be used later on for a bigger massive attack. Yeah. So uh, what is your take on uh, the procedural mechanism of handling a bug bounty in, okay. in this case? So, be, you know, considering that I've been part of that journey for three plus years, uh, at how IT firms actually operate. Time up, uh, but people are enjoying warming up. Uh, these company, no company, OEMs in particular, unless they do have uh, <coughs> a fix around, uh, at times, they do not disclose these vulnerabilities. Uh, to be fair, to be fair, it may it may sound as not done, but at times the uh, the release of such information, particularly when you do not have a true fix around it, may do more damage to the ecosystem than doing the right thing. If I may uh, say Go that ahead, way. Up. Yeah. So, uh, have I answered your question to start with? I'm so sorry, but not exactly. In plan. No, sum it up, sum it up one, thing. one thing. Let, 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 let me just try to answer your question, sir. Uh, I think uh, uh, this is the business model of uh, uh, the bug bounty. We, we cannot change it. Uh, even, even Snowden will not give you all the vulnerability what he is having. The NSA also will not give you. <laughs> they will start releasing one, and others they will keep it. That that nobody can change, boss. That that is what we know, and we should be prepared to manage that. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh. I think your answer is the question so long, it will take Hawana yeah. to explain. He's showing me. Can I? I thought you were doing the consulting. I thought you were doing the consulting. You're asking us these or that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll answer that very quickly. Yeah, okay. Talk to people inside your organization and outside your organization, be it competitors or, or whomever, but create connections with those people. Go ahead, one more. So, uh, bug bounty definitely it will help for the SOC effectiveness, but I think it for the hamper. No, no, if it help, 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 it help, help. help. No, no, but he said he's, he was like <coughs> not happy, so this one, different views. But that's right to have views, it can demoralize you. I agree with you. Your SOC could be demoralized, but that's what SOC has to job. It's a SOC job, but I think internal, doing from the internal, it's a, it will be very chaotic situations. I think, you know, it's a, it's a their job. It's only about the culture of the organization where you can finger point on the, you know, what are the process gaps or something, you know, the culture issues, but not, not, not on the techie kind of stuff. I don't think it's a finger and, pointing. And sometimes your SOC guys or your uh, information security guys, they already aware where is the gap. And sometimes it is a known gaps and we wanted to accept it. So they, they very well know how to exploit the situations. They know all and in and out. Only thing they wanted to know whether it is feasible from outside also or not. But do they have to get it? Yes, go ahead. So I just want to take this discussion beyond uh, IT security risk. Uh, wow, one more, uh, one more. Yeah. <laughs> Cancel the next so, one. Uh, actually, no, the, the discussion uh, uh, needs to be taken to that level because IT security probably requires a lot of skills and that may come from the external world and the uh, internal world. But the operational vulnerabilities, 
and we have seen the case of the bank and the kind of fraud level of fraud. In those, I think internal bug bounty will play humongous benefit because there will be only internal people will know the operational arrangement and yeah. structure yeah. of this uh, organization. Yeah, I agree, completely yeah, agree. Yes, but, but I just switch off a power plant. Bah, Sorry, agree. <laughs> my my six so incentivizing me to switch off a power. Plant. No, no, but I completely agree with you, sir. Yeah. But uh, the only okay, thing yes. is, the the context is little different here. The discussion, the one which you are telling, is already in some way or other already institutionalized in any most of the corporates in the name of a whistleblower policy. Yeah, but that is uh, that is not that happening is or not, not happening. Really that's happening a different the way thing. we are seeing it here. Now, yeah. now we'll tell that yeah. somebody blows the whistle, you pay or not, and call the call that as a bug bounty. That's a different issue altogether. Yeah, but then whistle blowers will be a whistle bug bounty kind of thing. Then for that to happen. Okay. Yeah. One more question on a very funny light note. Any consultants here like me? Anybody else who provides security services? Come on, one and yeah, got them. Okay. Anybody else too? How do guys like us who provide services and even guys like CISOs, how do you ensure your boys who are meant to do your work don't end up doing half the time bug bounties because you don't pay them well enough? It's a genuine problem, guys. Okay, you got your best guys. No, participate, yes. But what is the official time when they come to office and start doing bug bounties rather than your work? There's no official time, right? It's a performance review. If they do their job exactly as you've laid it out, could and they, they do have done a better well, job if they had could they have done a better pen testing job if they had done more on your company versus a ten thousand dollar? That's up to the performance review. Any views, Gautam? Yes, sir. Your view. Would you agree for CISOs? Doing something which is illegal and creating Completely more hassles for us. <laughs> all, the, uh, all these are correct. Supporting. All these are correct, but you should not to go to the Nevers company and start doing this activity <laughs> from there. That's why I said, as long as it is official and everything. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Competition. So, that's, that's okay. But uh, <laughs> the, the most important thing is, you it has to be managed in a more disciplined way. You just give free to them that go and do that. You will miss the forest for the trees. So people will start doing that activity only. Also consider non-compete agreements because if you're doing, if they're doing yes. bug bounties, um, yes. you know, as well as their day job, which is finding vulnerabilities in systems, then that's that's going to be a direct competition to to their day job. So yeah, I think I don't say something. So it's a known incentive for uh, for us. Uh, so if people are doing bug bounty and earning money, we're fine with it. Um, yes, there is always this concern about whether they're doing more, more bug bounty or doing our professional services. But as long as they are open about it as to what they're doing, we are, we are fine with it. We, we actually encourage. It's a business decision you've taken to Absolutely. Absolutely. You consider it more yeah, beneficial than not. Thanks, Otto. Sorry, can't hear you. Can you get it? The audience can't hear you. Last question and then I sum up. Unless you're giving us half an hour more. So the issue what I have is uh, if, uh, if, uh, if my employee is uh, using bug bounty to find a vulnerability in some uh, some uh, neighbor's uh, website. Some website. And uh, unfortunately, if the same vulnerability is being found in our thing, <laughs> then that is the issue. Then deserves to be sacked. Yeah. Yeah, so if he's not found in your own website and somebody else's, yeah. Okay. So I'll just sum up some of the lighter notes. Respect the past and protect the future. Dugaji mentioned that. Pat on the back. Recognition is important. You mentioned that. It's good to recognize. Depends on the stage of life where you are for this Hall of Fame bug bounty. CISO uh, is not useful. Crisis mode, someone mentioned that. Career is so over is what it stands for. Badly set up bug bounty programs can do more damage, which you mentioned. Uh, having a bug bounty and not responding is the worst thing to do, which you mentioned on that. It's the salary, right? They will go public if you don't give it to them, right? You will, okay? Not something you can go uh, set up and forget. It has to be responded to. Cracking and hacking reset. No value for bug bounty in open source. That was one viewpoint that was debated. Uh, bug bounty from closed environments is almost always there. As I mentioned, open environments is, is sometimes debatable. Uh, mixed colors. We had purple, violet, blue, red. 
and I like that. Very interesting 12 hour, 12 year story. Hall of Fame does not work, cash works. So Pat of Black does not work, cash works. Dilbert cartoons, perpetual uh, purple and blue teams, Hall of Fame, sock effectiveness, bug bounty to improve CTI is what you mentioned, should not go to neighbor's place and start hacking, and, and non-compete agreement. With that, we complete an interesting uh, discussion. Thank you very much for a lovely audience and a great panel.